go to school. Don't forget your books and know you gotta learn the golden rule. The teacher tells you stop your play and get on with your work. And to be like Johnny Too Good, well, don't you know he never should, but he's coming along. My schooling had a profound impact on my life, really, and, uh, you know, I, I used to be very sorry for myself <laughs> with uh, having been sent to boarding school for 10 years, but really not. It, it, that, that just really um, amplified the deep yearning and longing inside me to, to find who I was and to, to find my connection with life and with God and, and to find uh, the true meaning of life because I didn't get it at school. And I left school very confused and uh, very hungry. And I think that hunger and that passion and that confusion really fueled a lot of the songs, including school. I think there's a lot, it's what's missing at school that is, for me, the loudest thing. Because we, we are taught to function outwardly, but we're not taught who we are inwardly and what really the true purpose of life is. There's very little this discussion even in school. And I think, um, for me, the, the natural uniqueness and the natural awe and wonder and uh, thirst and enthusiasm and joy of life that young children have um, get lost. It gets beaten out of them in a way uh, by being taught how to be logical and, and function in the world and make money and, you know, and, and conform, really. Well, if you can imagine, I mean, I was in a school for 10 years from age 8 to 18 so to go through puberty and, uh, and uh, go through all those hormone changes with no girls in sight, you're with 600 boys, that, that in itself is pretty unhealthy. But uh, the school was in the middle of nowhere, and, um, but it was very, you know, everyone, we wore uniforms and uh, uh, had to keep our hair short, you know, with the Beatles telling us to, you know, showing us how, to, how good it looked long. <laughs> But as soon as the Beatles came along, they, they changed my whole world. Um, that was the first time actually that I connected with vocals. For me, I was just always waiting for the, for the next record to come out, the next album, because it was always such a leap in um, inventiveness and, um, um, you know, they broke down all the barriers, all the boundaries of music for me. And uh, that also the music became personal, more and more personal for them also. And up until that point, really, music was very impersonal. I think John Lennon really showed me how to bear your soul in music. And I really uh, respected him as an artist for that. And maybe without knowing it, um, that's what I, I did. I mean, my, my songs uh, were always, they had to be personal, like I didn't know any other way. And from the first time that she really done me, she done me good. You know, that was also a time, if you remember, in the 60s where everything was being questioned. And I think that was very healthy. Um, all the old institutions were being kind of challenged and broken down, and it was a very revolutionary time like that. And uh, that was what I was witnessing on the outside world while I was in this very strict institution you know, boarding school in England. Don't do this, and don't do that. What are they trying to do? Make the boy if you didn't wear a dress. Don't criticize, they're all that wise. Do it the daily trick, knowing the devil trick, knowing that you have. There was definitely a lot of confusion in my being. For me, where I found uh, 
belonging was with music. You know, my guitar was where I went to feel good about myself. Um, a lot of the rest of my life I didn't feel good about. I was very shy and um, didn't have much self-confidence, so, except for when it came to music. Just the knowledge that I had something that, that made me feel wonderful inside, I think that was the biggest thing. The moment I played that guitar and was writing songs, that was really a place in myself that I could identify with and felt good about. You're coming along.